Okay. I'm connected, but it took a while. Oh, right. Okay. Shall I not maybe connect them? Mm-hmm. Maybe, yes. Yeah, yeah. the way uh, to say that. Sweeting and Peter Koch. I just telling them that you are in the process to join them. It can only be for half an hour. Them yeah. It took time for me as well. Yes, of course. Um, I can take the notes from the recording. Of course. Do you have a message? In parallel, I'm going to uh, try to connect my computer as well. So once I'm done with that, I should be able to connect to that. And uh, I don't have to rely on it. Um, Hi everyone, um, this is Izumi speaking, uh, channeling through her man's account. Um, so we're just waiting for a few more people to join the call and uh, so we'll start in hopefully um, three minutes or so.
And do what? Yeah. Oh, I have many interests. <laughs> okay. So, um, thank you all. I hope you can all hear me. Um, this is Izumi speaking. Um, and uh, in we're in Buenos Aires, so we have in the room um, uh, Rani, uh, Morandek, Craig, Mwandua as the team members, and of course, um, a man is here to support us as the secretariat. So thanks everyone, uh, and thank you very much, uh, John, for joining us. Um, so let's quickly go through the agenda. Um, so in addition to the regular agenda, going through the actions review, the, um, we want to cover the Christine Charter, um, the revised Christine Charter that we discussed with the MOEC. And um, another point is the coordination with other operational communities, especially the issue of IPR. Um, and then we want to move on about um, confirming the stages of implementation of the proposal. So the uh, review committee charter was published now, and uh, on the SLA, we, um, the comment uh, period has closed, but uh, we want to um, have more clarity SLA next step. So I think this is the things that we want to cover in terms of uh, the implementation stages. And then lastly, we want to share um, any notable discussions that I've had with the group. So anything else that uh, you want to um, to cover? I don't see any comments from people in the room. So uh, let's then first go to the actions review, which uh, I recall as um, minutes from the last meeting. So I, I think the status is this Haman has already shared the minutes with me, and it's on my phone. So sorry, I haven't been able to uh, review it, but I will do that uh, um, uh, within two days and then get back to you. So hopefully, we will have the agenda published uh, on the, the notes from the last meeting published within this week. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be good to have uh, more clarity on the cycle of the minutes because, um, uh, I mean, it's, for this time, it's, it's my fault that I was unable to get back to you. But so maybe we don't want to delay the notes too mm -hmm. much, um, maybe like upload it um, maybe two weeks or maybe one week after the meeting. It's good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so let's target that. Um, yeah. uh, so let's uh, go to the Christine Charter. Uh, so I think um, it has been circulated to the mailing list, uh, what NOEC has suggested, and uh, I believe on the line it's just it's circulated to a suggestion to the Christian mailing list as well, right? So would you like to cover a little bit on uh, the points that you wanted to add and uh, see if any further comments? Thank you, Zimi. Nurani here. Um, so I'll keep my comments very brief because I uh, sent around my suggested modification um, just um, very quickly. Um, I think the NROEC suggested text was great in that it clarified the, the role of the CRIS team moving forward. Uh, and I just um, wanted to add the part about communication, given that the CRIS team plays an important role um, in receiving communications from the ICG uh, and responding to the ICG, but also coordination with other communities. So it's, it was really just adding uh, a line of clarification in there. Um, and just for the um, 
for the record. We, um, um, I've mentioned this to the members of the NROEC, and there seems to be general support for this uh, idea. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Naroni. And I think uh, we did receive a question at the uh, morning ASO session, so I think it's good that we have clarity about our role and the fact that our term will be completed after our submission to the SDG. This will give more clarity to the community. So I think uh, once we're fixed, we want to make an announcement to the global list that, okay, our charge is updated. And, uh, um, perhaps it's more appropriate for the NRO to do that than the Chris team, I suppose, because mm -hmm. this is the charter developed by the NRO. Yeah. So, Herman, would you be able to help follow up with the NROC about this revised charter? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, thanks. So, I think um, we covered on that. Um, and uh, thanks, John, for sharing that. Sorry. Well, we can't hear anything on the uh, call. So, John, I've, I've just been like, uh, I just realized that we've been talking just among ourselves. Okay, <laughs> so, uh, so from the IPR issue. So, uh, while we're here in Brandon's Iris, It's showing online that you guys are on mute. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, can hear you now. All right. We're going to use my laptop. We can hear you now. Okay. So I don't know how much um, you were able to share what we discussed. So let me. Zumi, we didn't hear any of that. All right. 
Okay, so just to um, um, do a recap, so while we were here in Buenos Aires, we had uh, discussions privately, Nirani, myself, and um, the names chairs, the IETF chairs, the, the leaders um, had a discussions about the IPR issue. And um, the names chair have agreed to reconcile um, on the proposal. The, the reasoning, um, the reason actually for the names to have come up with this uh, IPR element <coughs> is inconsistent with our proposal was it was added at the very last minute and it wasn't uh, the consensus of the CWG itself. Um, so Jonathan Robinson have expressed his willingness to reconcile both privately um, in our meeting with them as well as uh, on the public session of the CWG that uh, they're they're happy to to reconsider reconciling and uh, so and Craig was um, wanted to speak to this point. Okay. Um, um, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, so uh, what I was saying was that in discussions with a few of the people here, um, and from what I understand, uh, the names community um, realizing that the last-minute changes to the term sheet, adding the IPR section, um, was creating a lot of heartache, um, have agreed. And I don't know whether they've stated this. If not, they will shortly. Uh, they will remove um, the IPR section from the term sheet. So the way the CWG proposal is, uh, there is a term sheet that actually sets out their proposed contract, uh, what do we call our principles, uh, SLA elements. So they call theirs the term sheet and it's an annexure to their proposal. And it's actually in the term sheet that they have a clause in square brackets that talks about the IPR. Um, so that's the only place the IPR is mentioned. Um, so what they are proposing to do is to remove that section, seeing that it has no consensus anyway, um, and that would then remove the inconsistency. So the question then follows as to whether or not they have a position on IPR. Probably not in this document, but I think what they're saying publicly is that they are very keen to work with us collaboratively to come up with a solution that is acceptable to everyone that's not in conflict. Okay, uh, um, Narani here uh, speaking to Craig's uh, computer. I just wanted to add two very quick points of clarification. Um, and one is, is that um, what what uh, Jonathan Robinson has said publicly is, first of all, that the text in there is in square brackets. Um, so essentially, um, the CWG does not have a position on IPR. There is no consensus position at all. Um, and then he also clarified to us um, privately that this term sheet is also, um, if you only look for the IPR section, it might look like there's, there's um, <laughs> text that means something, so to speak, but really this, um, uh, the term sheet is really an annex and, and it is just, um, it is not official agreed language in any way. So, um, and, and like others have said, they've, they've said that they were going to work to reconcile, so we're very positive about it. Thank you. Sorry, just as a final add-on, it's very interesting that the term sheet actually says this is prepared by the lawyers, hasn't been fully reviewed yet, and if there's any inconsistency between this term sheet and the proposal set up in our, in our main part of, it, of the proposal, then the main part of the proposal supersedes the inconsistency. So it just means, seems to me that they haven't actually spent a lot of time going through it. The lawyers prepared it as a draft, and they just stuck it in. So I think overall in terms of the, um, um, the proposal with the three other communities, this IPR issue is the thing, the point that was considered to be most significantly um, not consistent and uh, since the names have express their willingness to reconcile. I think we're good um, overall in this uh, future uh, steps on the ICG. 
So let's go to the review committee charter. Um, and um, so it's been published, and I hope you, you all had a chance to read. Um, I don't think there's anything controversial or inconsistent, and I think uh, it was it's, um, so the difference between our proposal and the charter is that it's adding more specifics to the numbers of representatives from each of the RIRs. So the idea is to have um, three representatives from each RIR region, or two as the community representative, and one from RIR staff, which is very much uh, very similar to the composition of the CRIS team or, or the ASO as well. So uh, I don't see anything controversial. I suppose we will still be officially preparing a response from the CRIS team saying that uh, uh, we're happy and we, we think that this is uh, consistent uh, with the proposal and uh, also call for comments from others in the community. So I think this can be done within the next week, target uh, next week after we're back from Buenos Aires and uh, we can submit comments to them. So um, I think the comment period is two weeks. So um, if it submits, if Chris uh, submits within one week, then that's clearly within the time. So the only other thing I want to mention is that um, consistent with the, I think expectation of the Chris team, the selection of the uh, review committee members are left up to each of the RIRs in the method of their choosing, kind of like the Chris team as well. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say. And I don't expect many comments from the community on the review team, but um, may would it be fair to assume that similar table will be prepared for the review team in case we receive any comments? I mean, I, I don't expect this, but uh, process-wise. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, then let's go to the next. Uh, so the SLA, uh, I think uh, we've already completed our comment period, so I just so uh, what we want to confirm is more the clarity on the next step. So uh, do we have any rough idea about the next version to be published? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I can dash. So um, the RIR lawyers met yesterday for a lovely seven hours um, to work on the SLA and it's still not finished yet. So we will continue working actually in this room immediately after the CRISP call. And our intention is to um, provide the NROEC with the revised draft by today, um, together with a spreadsheet explaining all our comments and also a, a document explaining high level changes to the document. Um, and we are then expecting the NROEC to go through their own processes of uh, approving the second draft, mm -hmm. and I imagine it'll be ha it will happen within a week. Maybe sometime in early July, hopefully. Oh, I think it'll be hopefully mm -hmm. <laughs> within this this month. I would imagine. Oh, that would be super. Yeah. yeah. So, so you have a second draft. So so that that second draft uh, incorporates all the comments that we the lawyers considered appropriate. Um, to the doc to make to the document. Uh, obviously, uh, a lot of people have a lot of views. Um, we were not prepared. Oh well, I think I think our position was that if the document we thought was clear uh, and people thought that needs clarity, we we have taken the, the time to make it clearer. Yeah. Um, but we were kind of simply not very interested in people wanting to have a language change because they have a different way of expressing things to us. If we, I mean, we did consider every single comment uh, and if, if it is genuinely, genuinely not clear, we tried to clarify it, but we didn't change it for the sake of changing just because one person asked for it. Sure, that's totally makes sense. Uh, and with, with our process, so it's not about preference of the language and um, as long as what should be reflected in the SLA is clear. I think you know, we don't have to be picky about specific language and happy to read it to the legal team about the challenges. So uh, well, thank you so much. And uh, it's really an additional work. Um, so thanks. Um, and then related to the SLA next steps, uh, I have no like further comments related to the comments that um, Craig has made. But um, so there were some discussions uh, with the NREC next steps. 
And what NREC has clarified is that uh, once we go through the, once uh, RIRs go through the negotiation with the ICAP, there may be some changes in the LA tax rates. Um, and um, the future process related to this, even though, even in case that it might uh, affect the numbers of our community proposal, is that uh, RIRs will inform the community and then it will be published. Uh, and uh, so there will be more uh, formal consultation process. It wasn't very clear if there was, might, maybe some RIRs will be due, but uh, so at the minimum, there will be some information to be distributed, but um, it's up to the process for each RIR. And uh, Andre online, uh, so how do we ensure that the final uh, product, the SLA, is the ICAP? the numbers proposal and uh, so this is something that is uh, completely is it sufficient to share information or um and uh unfortunately well you know i think that i, I don't we didn't really get much clarity on this right did they mention what they thought would happen after they would have negotiations between the RIR operator and ICANN? Because at some stage, and I'm not the one to make this call, I'm just making an assumption. At some stage, the community will have to let go and let the operator go with the contracting party. And that is not something you do between community, it's not a community-led process. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering when that, when that, when that period would come. And there would, I think that once you start negotiating and you get two, the operator and contracting party uh, together, and once the negotiations go, I don't, I don't think there's room, just in my opinion, for then community to be jumping in and saying, oh, no, that was really great, or no, let's go back to the table again. I, you know, so what do you mean by that, Azumi? That, that's, that's the question I have. Okay, so should I? Um First, and then go to our uh, and then um, um, yeah. So I'm just uh, trying to raise the point that Andre has raised. So, um, and I think uh, at the meeting uh, with NREC, there was general agreement that uh, this um, this implementation phase is left up to the RIRs, and uh, it's really not up to the community to further make comments about what should be uh, in the SLA text, and it's not sufficient for the RIRs every time. I'll go back. Thank you. You know, this can you know, is this okay? So yeah. I don't think uh, we want to do that, and I think we're in agreement about this. Um, okay. it, the only point is that when there's after the negotiation that there are changes that affect the numbers community proposal. Um, so mm -hmm. how, how do we have? Uh, well, I that's how I understand. Um, that, but it, so it's too bad that Andre's not here. And I'm not sure we have um, complete clarity about how we handle that. Um, so that's, that's mm -hmm. I think that's a question for the VC. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I would imagine that once the work is done, all the comments have been brought in by the community into the document, it is no longer a crisp or community dealing. The community needs to then have trust that the RAR goes and negotiates with, with the contracting party to find the right balance and make sure that none of the principles are, 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 are given up. But there, there are nuances to how you do contract negotiations, and I imagine that the community... That's my feeling. I don't know. We must seek clarification from the EC, but that would be my feeling. Okay, sure. Okay, so I'll go to Craig, Ronnie, and... Um... I'm an observer. Okay. You, you can be here as an observer. Yeah. So, so I agree. So I agree with um, Paul Brindy about this um, because I'll what you know we the RIRs in the RIRs in negotiating with ICANN would try to seek the best outcome for the community, um, and obviously our negotiation process cannot be at a disadvantage compared to ICANN because we are hampered with 
some sort of processes of continuous disclosure, whereas ICANN does not have that obligation. So, so obviously, um, you know, the significant departure then it would be, I imagine, up to the NROEC to make a call uh, and to seek consultation on significant departures. Um, but for, um, you know, obviously, but I agree with Paul. I think I think ultimately it's up to the RIR to negotiate. Um, and I imagine that significant dis departures will come back to the community for some discussion, but not on nitty gritty. Oh, okay. yeah. I think everybody's in agreement. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's go to Nirani. And uh, Paul, did you want to comment quickly on Harry's point? Or yeah, just to say that yeah. I, I actually agree with you. What negotiation? We can't hear you guys again. Suggest that there should be community um, group drafting of the final SLA. We've been very clear when, when making the proposal that really uh, the reason we put the principles in there was to give enough leeway for, for the RIRs as contracting parties to to write and finalise the SLA. <laughs> I, I do, and, and, and I believe the communities trust the RARs to do the right thing, right? We have a, a history here, so this is not coming out of the blue. Um, my, my thinking, however, is, is that just, just like, I think it has been useful for the CRIS team to comment on not the details of the SLA or the wording, but just how, whether or not it's consistent with the proposal. I think that has been a useful part of, of moving the process along. Same with the review charter, that we can send a signal that, yes, indeed, this is still consistent with the proposal. Um, and I could see that. Um, um, that that could be useful to do as well. I mean, we are only really talking about should there be a major departure from the proposal. I don't think we 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 are talking about SLA that that might slightly differ in wording from a previous version. I'm just think I'm I'm saying if we get to that point where the RIRs for any reason would depart from the principles in the proposal. I think it would be good to, for us all to be clear about what will happen then and what is the role of everyone. And, and while I'm perfectly happy to leave that to the RRs, but of course as a CRISP team member, I also feel responsibility for, for the proposal that has been developed in a bottom-up way. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a very good discussion to have and that one that we need to, mm -hmm. to uh, seek clarity on. Thank you, Marani. Yeah, it's clear here. I think, look, ultimately the scope of CRISP work will be defined by the, the, the final charter that, that gets amended and released by and, and is signed off by the NROEC. Uh, the CRISP team was, was assembled primarily for coming up with a proposal, and it's now been expanded to look at some of the, the draft documents uh, for the SLA and for the review committee. And I think I think it's safe to, for me to say that I think the NROEC's expectation is that it actually stops mm -hmm. at the end of that, mm -hmm. but and not to go further. Uh, so obviously, you know, if the Chris team can see, thinks that it can help and want to do more, then it will, it will go to NROEC mm -hmm. to get the scope further expanded. But I think the intention at the moment, not speaking for NROEC, but just my my understanding of mm -hmm. what they were thinking, uh, is that it's going to end. When the at ICG when when the ICG comes up with a final proposal. Yeah, I think um, we're in agreement on that as well. I don't think anybody's wanting to question for more uh, role from the community to the answer. I think that's what he's asking, and uh, it's just like the final product and comparison, regardless of who's going to do that, how do we ensure that? That was I think that was the question that someone just uh, already explained. Um, so. 
maybe this is something that um, um, since Andre is not here, we, we might want to follow up on the mailing list. But I think we're in general agreement that uh, uh, we, don't, we don't. There's no need to micromanage or you know, expect RAR to update and consult the community. That's now like in the hands of RARs and. Uh, I think our focus team's uh, involvement on this is over. That uh, we have already submitted our comments. But this open question on, I guess, as opposed to the small product in REC to consider that uh, how do they ensure that the final product is consistent with the, with the numbers proposal? So, um, so that's my summary of um, what's being shared so far. Okay, so maybe we'll pull up online and see Andre has any further comments, and if not, I think this is where we are. Uh, and then lastly, our discussions, um, any notable discussions when, uh, when we're hearing from Cyrus. And uh, one thing that um, we, I think, uh, we had discussions with is it, uh, it's not being um, explicitly uh, fully communicated that uh, we really have this bottom-up uh, community-based process and um, it, it's not being like we're not into governmental organization and uh, yeah I suppose the way that for the people to know better about your community and this idea of making a statement um, uh, a declaration um, about explaining it in our community and um, um, with shared and uh, it was felt that it would also Having this would help in a smooth uh, transition so that the youth government would recognize. Yeah, so if RIRs and its community went through this process, then we feel more comfortable that um, in addition to the proposal, you know, we can trust these people to, to delegate the stewardship part. So that was an idea that was uh, mentioned, and I think we want to start uh, uh, working on this. I don't think we have any clarity as to sort of work on this uh, and how we do it. So we just agree that we, we want something like this, right? Yeah. Um, hello, Narana here again. Um, no, I'm not sure if we've had to have uh, made any decisions about that. However, I just wanted to add that one thing that we have discussed is actually developing better communications material. And uh, that that is something um, that um, I can actually start producing material um, trying to explain the the quiz proposal. And we had some good talks with them, saying that we're very happy to work together with them. But the source of this material really needs to come from the RIRs. Um, and I, we've talked to the RIR communications people about developing this and that we're happy to, to work together with them to develop more of this material. Um, and I, so I think that is something that we've committed and I guess um, um, as vice chair and, and as chairs we are happy to contribute with the content and help shaping those messages because like you say, we. For us, this is very clear, but we um, we might need to be a little bit better at communicating this to the outside world. Yes, definitely. Uh, yeah, Paul, I also want to add something to this. So was anybody actually uh, assigned to you from the CCG as your go-to person to, to do this? No. no. Can we get one? I, that's <laughs> what I would suggest that we document down, that we actually either a person or a small team or the whole team, I don't know how they want to work or whatever. Um, but uh, from the CCG, you know, like we're, we're not CCG, you know, like no, <laughs> we're not. But we, you know, we obviously will work with them. You yeah. know what I mean? But maybe that's something that we need to we need to have. So, Herman, can we make a note of that? Then mm -hmm. we must, and we're going to a meeting right now with yes. those people and, and some others who must slip out. I'm sorry, but um, I will bring that up in there that we, we right. need to identify those that are going to be leading the uh, communications and the material that we want to produce together with the Chris team. Does that sound oh, excellent. Wonderful. Yes, that is wonderful. Thank you so okay. much. My contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I must sure. excuse yeah, sure, myself. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, in addition to this communication, I think we also discussed about making a, a declaration, like an announcement. So this is something that, uh, so it's two separate things. So I think the purpose is related, you know, that we want to, um, share better about our community and helps with ultimately with the transition process. So 
improving the materials, the, the Christine and our website, that's one thing. And in, in addition to this, make kind of some kind of announcement statement as well, I ask, uh, that we're committed to this. So I think, uh, so on the latter point, I don't think we've assigned or identified anybody to work on that. Um, uh, yeah. Um, I think that that sort of uh, statement of commitment, uh, I think it's probably uh, NROEC that's going to do that, right? So um, I think it's kind of, we should probably leave it to them to do that. I think they know to do that. And we'll just have to make sure that it's done. But I don't think um, we have a role in sort of overseeing or, or, or kind of making it happen, I suppose. I think we've expressed uh, uh, agreement with their idea about doing this, um, and I think we can maybe make statements that we uh, encourage them to do something like that, but I think that's the limit of our role. Thank you. Um, I agree. I think um, it is not for us to say what the RARs uh, should commit to, uh, but I think some of these things are very um, obvious. Mm -hmm. um, but, so I, I completely agree. I think maybe the role of the CRISP team is to, come to ask to say that this would be very helpful because I see part of this process, it, it can instill further trust in the process and it, it can make some of these these commitments that we think the RARs have already made uh, more clear to the outside world. So I think for us to ask the RARs to do it, I think it would be very be appropriate. But of course, then it's up to, and um, of course, we can have we can contribute or say that this or that this or that would be helpful. Uh, but then it's of course up to the RARs to 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 do it. Fantastic. I think Nurani, but I, I can't. I forgot the word you used, but you picked a really good word. I think it makes sense for Chris to. You know, in ICANN language, send a communique to the NROEC to right. say that we fully support the NROEC in making a statement that talks about our model, model our open transparent model, you know, those things, you know, we are you know, committed to account being accountable to our community, committed to, you know, working in this open process, etc. Uh, I think it would help the NROEC a lot if, if the CRISP team actually says that we think that as part of this process it would be very useful and we, we as the CRISP team fully support the uh, NROEC or the RIRs making a statement and we, we can flesh out some of the statement and they don't have to use it all but they would get a flavour mm -hmm. of the sort of things that the community would be comfortable mm -hmm. with the RIRs making. Okay, good. So I think we're in full agreement. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I totally, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, good. Um, so we can work as the Chris team on, on making this uh, um, mm -hmm. public, uh, yeah, whatever we call it, and yeah. ask make UK yeah. or whatever um, to the global list. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as a related point, our last, I think it would be ha good to have more clarity on, so in addition to the um, SLA review committee and uh, this uh, communique, Anything more that uh, would we could sort of expect in the implementation? Um, it, if there is, then I think it would be good to flash them out. Um, so far, I don't think I don't identify anything else um, except for um, the IPR issue, which is waiting for the coordination. Mm -hmm. So maybe good to give a summary to the community on okay, what's the status? They're now hearing one after the other. SLA review committee and uh, what else uh, are we done? Mm -hmm. So maybe this is something that we can uh, summarize as the Christine and um, yeah, and share with the community. Yeah. It's Craig again. I think in relation to the IPR, because it is actually part of the SLA, it, it's probably rather than sort of having opening with more topics, it probably is good better that we talk in terms of SLA okay. and IPR being an issue underneath the SLA. Okay. Um, and the other thing I want to add is, and just to kind of um, share some thinking, well certainly from my point of view, I'm not sure if this represents all the lawyers' view, um, SLA currently contemplates and places an obligation on ICANN to transfer the IPRs to a nominee of RIRs because we have in our mind IETF trust. Mm -hmm. um, 
one of the things that we're very concerned and, and conscious about is that we want the ability to sign a contract with ICANN on CRIS principles as soon as we can. Um, you will probably have heard Paul Wilson talking about stage implementation at the ICG meeting. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that whilst ICG would submit a single proposal from all three communities that, that works, mm -hmm. um, it fully now the ICG fully expects that the implementation might not happen totally in parallel and at the same time with everyone signing the document on the same day because some implementation is easier than others. So I think what Paul's idea is that you know if we can sign a, a contract with ICANN, and the contract would actually have a date that says this contract will come into effect as soon as the US releases the numbers function or ICANN from the numbers function. Um, so, uh, so where I'm getting at is that what we want to be able to do is to sign a contract with ICANN as soon as possible um, and have the implementation of the IPR in terms of transfer as the obligation that ICANN can do at that time or within a certain period rather than for that to happen before the signing of the document because we see that a requirement for ICANN to transfer the, the, the IPR before the signing of the document will delay the signing of the document and therefore delay any potential release of the numbers function from ICANN and therefore our ability to have that relationship with ICANN as possible. I don't know if I'm making myself clear or am I going, is that too complicated? Mm -hmm. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, I think I'll just make a very brief comment, and I think um, it was also recognised by um, Larry. I thought that was interesting, Larry Strickling, in in the evening session on Sunday, I think, uh, that really there are there's par parallel processing that can happen. Uh, what the details of of those things um, are can be worked out, but the, I really think it's in our interest to start preparing, laying the ground um, as much as possible and put all the pieces that we can put in place um, in place without further delay so that come the date of the transition it will be smooth. And I, so I think um, that idea is perfectly reasonable and I think it has support in the community. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So thanks for raising this and uh, the discussion. So this is something that, well, I suppose it's not exactly the part of the uh, the crystal, but something that we observe, and it would be useful to, you know, if you hear any further updates, um, hear this as a part of the implementation on what to expect on um, um, about our proposal. Yes. Um, just a final note. I mean, yeah, I mean, it is possible that, you know, so at the moment, a lot of discussions revolve around the trademark and the domain name. That's the really at the heart of it. The rest of it, I think we know in terms of copyright and other intellectual property rights that we do actually have access to all those registry data and things like that. So so at the moment, the controversial part is actually about the trademark and the domain name. And I think ICANN, in, in discussions with them, recognizes that these assets, if you like, um, are not held by them kind of in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. They've never enforced it, and there's a lot of prior use by IGF and different communities even before the registration. So so even if I can were, so even if there's, if there's no transfer of the, those uh, trademark and domain name, um, and even if we go ahead and use it anyway, I can would have a lot of difficulty suing us because we, we the RIR communities and the IETF community, have used those intellectual property rights before the registration date. Mm -hmm. So in, in trademark law, there's a thing called prior use. So if you use it before the registration, then you have <coughs> continued right to use it. So so that's one point to bear in mind. The second one is I think ICANN is very conscious of that point as well. And they are probably uh, in discussions with them considering ways in which they can actually open that up without us having to come up with all these very complicated solution. Um, but I don't think there's a resolution that yet there yet, but they are conscious of it and and if they do kind of come up with some sort of opening up uh, of statement about own community ownership or something like that, um, then that could remove a lot of the issues that's on the table.
So just as a final point, but there's no resolution, so it's just discuss in discussion. So I think that that's something that they're thinking. I just want to make one very quick point. I find it it is just I'm just noting that um, this IPR issue is one that's being brought up as as the most contentious issue, and really for it's us, a, it's it's not a issue. it's a non-issue, yeah. and, and that there is actually not an identified conflict on the table at the moment. But, you know, I think that actually means that we have a very solid proposal. Yes, exactly. Yes. So I think that we should see that as a very positive thing, that there's totally been no, no other, um, there's no, been no drama, no contentious issues. Um, the only thing that people are, are looking at is this, and it's not. Yeah. I totally agree. Um, and I think the that we want to the ICPR discussions because is, we have to submit to the NTIA at the same time and this might be a factor of a timeline uh, so there's no need to collaborate in terms of the content but in terms of the timeline watch how it affects us I yep. think, uh, so I think we're all generally very good both in terms of the, preparing the implementation because we're very smooth you know SLA review the charts already published um, and um, the overall coordination with the other communities so, are uh, very, very smooth. So uh, I think uh, as a result of this meeting, I think we have a quite optimistic view about our uh, way forward. Okay, so uh, let's see if anybody else has any final points to raise. Oh, I do want to go back on the point about um, the Vickers team making a request or, or an announcement about um, what would be helpful for the RARs to make an announcement. I think it would be good to have some who, who holds the ball, uh, like uh, who, who would be responsible. Uh, uh, and, uh, well, <laughs> it's just, it's just maybe, yeah, maybe we as the chairs uh, and uh, um. Yeah, I'm not volunteering. <laughs> Sorry. I'm happy to. Um, actually, in the SLA already, in the in the recitals, in the background, SLA, there are already some words that kind of goes towards that. Um, there is a draft document, like a AOC type. Uh, that's uh, such a bad word with such a lot of baggage. Um, but in ICANN's um, response to the SLA, I think they did ask for some sort of um, accountability thing. So um, not not volunteering, but kind of giving you some pointers. Um, there are already some good words that you can actually cut and paste rather than having to reinvent the wheel. Um, but if you if you're really desperate, pull it together. <laughs> But I think I've got enough of my plate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.